Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 19 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn artificial intelligence or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice, enormous mug of iced coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're getting your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is we're going to start getting into kind of thinking about using all of this stuff that we've learned in Python and this artificial intelligence series and start thinking about using it to kind of start developing some pretty cool games, some things that we could do based on what we've already learned to start building some Python games. And so I'm going to kind of get you started today thinking in that direction. Then I'm going to give you an assignment. And what I really want to see is I want to see just how far you guys can take this because I know some of you guys on these homework assignments are going well beyond my solutions. It really makes me happy when I teach people and then they start doing better work than I'm doing. That means that I'm doing what I want, which is to build skills in people. And so if you guys can outdo me, that makes me happy. Also, I really love it when you guys you know, do a screen capture and then post your homework solutions on YouTube and then uh, in, in your video link back to this video so people watching your video would have context. And then on this video down in the comments, leave a link over to your video so people who, who watch me teach this can then go and look at different solutions that people have done. Also, I just love it when you guys look and subscribe to each other's channels and sort of make comments and encourage uh, one another, sort of like we're developing a little bit of a community here. But enough of this introductory chit chat. Let's jump in and let's actually get started. And so what I will need to do is I will need to get out of your way and then I will need to switch over to a desktop view. And then what I will need you to do is fire up your most excellent Visual Studio code. And then we will indeed need to create a new program. So we're going to come to our main Python working file here, our main Python working folder. We kick click the little plus and we are going to call this open cv-31 I do believe dot py and the dot py is kind of important and boom fresh new python program just waiting to be written okay but we don't want to start completely from scratch we want to start with that core program that we developed last week because in the last couple of les lessons I've taught you how to use media pipe to detect hand landmarks, find hands and detect hand landmarks, and how to parse that data where you can come back with usable XY positions of the various parts of the hand. So we always want to start with that software because that does the hard work for us. That program and that class that we created does the hard work where you can then very easily get the position of the uh, the position of the hands, if that makes sense. So what I will need you to do, if you don't already have that program up and handy, I need you to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. I need you to search on something like AI for everyone parsing hand position that should get it. You use this happy little search box here and search for parsing hand position. You'll come to this page. You can come down here to the most excellent code. And then what you can do is you can right mouse click and copy. And then after you copy, uh, we seem to have a little distraction here. Let's see if we can turn this off. I'm sorry. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to come here and we are going to paste Control-V to paste. And 
boom, we have the software that we developed last time. And just to kind of recap what this does, it creates a class called MP Hands. And then if you want to do hand landmark detection, you create an object. I called it find hands that calls that class MP hands. All right. And that will create the object. Then if you want to analyze a frame to find all the hand positions, all you've got to do is just uh, call the method marks inside of find hands. So you can say hand data is equal to find hands dot marks of what you pass it the frame. And then what it returns to you is it returns an array of all the hands that were found and for the hands that were found, all of the landmarks on those hands. That's just a very brief recap. If this doesn't make sense, go back and watch last week's lesson where I went over this ad nauseum. And the other thing that we just noticed here is what it's returning is it's returning that array of landmarks and it returns it in units of pixels. Okay, so it's not this normalized value. It returns actually the X and Y pixel positions of your various, uh, of your various uh, hand landmarks. OK, let's run this just to make sure that we didn't break anything in copying and pasting. OK, and boom, look at that. That's kind of like I think last time in the software, we just said find the index finger in the wrist and track it. And then we can do two hands if we want. So boom, this is working. And then what we end up with down here is we end up with the most easy to use data structure of hand data. OK, and so that is really, really good. So let's start thinking about developing a game. Well, if we're going to have a game, what we want to do is we want to put something. We want to put something on the screen. And so what I think I'm going to put is I'm going to put a little paddle, a little rectangle up at the top of the screen. And so if I am going to do that, if I am going to do that, there's a couple of things that I am going to want to do. I'm going to consider it a paddle. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, create a paddle width. And I think my paddle width, I'll just try about 125. You know, if I have a width, if I have an overall width of my uh, frame of 128, about about 10% of that would make sense paddle width of 125. And if I have a paddle width, I'm going to need a paddle height. And that paddle height, I am going to set at about 25 pixels. So now I've kind of defined this little paddle. I think it's good to go ahead and I think I'm going to set a paddle color. Paddle color is equal to what do you think on that paddle? You think we should make it green? I think I will. Zero comma, let's see, zero comma 255 comma zero should be green because we are operating in the blue, green, red color space. This should give us green on that paddle. <clears throat> and do I need to set anything else up? Yeah, I kind of need to keep track of the position of the paddle. And so there's going to be an X position of that paddle and there is going to be a Y position of that paddle. Do you think that makes sense? I'm trying to think, does that make sense? Yeah, I think it, uh, I think it does. I think it does. All right. I, uh, I'll come back. I'll put these in later. OK, for right now, we're just going to think in terms of having a paddle width and we are going to think in terms of having a paddle height and a paddle color. So we're just kind of defining the paddle and we can come in and put more parameters in in a minute. What you can imagine is I want a colored paddle pan paddle at the top of my screen and I want to be able to move that paddle back and forth. And so let's come down here and therefore where we are saying for hand in hand data, I don't want all those positions. All I want is where I'm pointing, which would be the tip of my index finger. And we can come over here just to verify and find where the tip of our index finger is. That would be that would be index number eight, right? That would be index number eight would be the tip of our index finger. And so that is what we are going to want to look at is the position of the eighth element. 
right? So we'll come back over here. And so here where you see that I stepped through for hand in hand data. And so if it found a hand up in the hand data, then there will be some data in there and then I can step through it. But I don't think that I need to actually step through. I don't need to actually step through it this time because I'm only going to have one point that I'm interested in, and that is point eight. And then also, I am not going to be interested in drawing a circle on my finger. And so I'm going to get rid of this. And what I know is I would at most have one index finger. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to come in here and I am going to draw a rectangle at the X value of where I am pointing. Now, I don't want a rectangle to follow my finger around the entire frame. I just want wherever my finger is, I want to take the X position of my finger and I want to put the paddle at the X position of my finger. So how would we do that? Well, we need to draw a CV2 dot rectangle. OK, and I'm getting that blasted double dot again. I don't know why that's happening. CV2 dot rectangle. OK, where do I want to put the rectangle? I want to put it on the frame. And now where do I want to put it? Well, you could imagine the simplest thing would be to just take hand because hand is going to be the single hand. Remember, hand data, I could have multiple hands, but hand is going to be the singular hand inside of hand data. And I know I'm only going to have one hand. And so I can just say for hand and hand data, it's going to be the first one. It's going to be the only one. But then which point do I want? The point that I am going to want is I'm going to want hand of what? Eight. OK, because that is the index finger. And then remember, it has a tuple in there of the X value and the Y value. Well, which one do I want? The X value, that is the zeroth element. So hand eight is the index finger. And then the zeroth element would be the X value of the tip of my index finger, if I am thinking about this right. So I would want that. And then for what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give a position. And so this would be a tuple and that would be the X value. And then as far as the Y value goes, what I think that I want for the Y value is I just want, uh, let's say I just want uh, zero. So I'm going to put comma zero because I want a zero Y value because I want it to stay up at the top. And so that is the upper left corner. That is the upper left corner of my paddle. Now I need the lower right corner of my paddle. And so that would be point two. And what would that be? Well, that would be hand of eight OK, and still the X value, which is zero. And then what do I want? I want to come over by what? Plus width. OK, and so that will make that box width wide, not width, paddle width. Width is the whole screen, but I want paddle width. So P-A-D-D-L-E width, paddle width. OK, and so the hand plus the paddle width would be the right corner, would be the the uh, right X value. And now I need the Y value. Well, I want to come down by how much? I want to come down by, uh, I'm going to have to think and just make sure I'm saying this right. I want to come down by paddle. Hmm. I'm thinking, yeah, paddle height, OK. Let me make sure that you guys are seeing what I'm doing there. Yeah, I need to get out of your way a little bit more, OK. So then the first point, the upper left point, is my the X value of my index finger. 
and then for X and then coming down zero. So I want it right up the upper left corner of that rectangle of that paddle to be up at the top of the screen. And then the second point, which is the bottom right corner, I'm going to come over from there, paddle width. And so now my paddle is paddle width. And then I need to come down by paddle height. All right. And then I need to close. I need to close that uh, I need to close that entire rectangle. But also after I have that point, then what else I'm going to need? Okay, what else I'm going to need is I'm going to need box color. And then if I wanted a solid box, I'm going to make it minus one. All right, so this should create a rectangle. The rectangle should be at the X position of my finger. And then it should come over by the width of the paddle and then it should start at the top of the screen and it should come down by paddle height. If that doesn't make sense, pause the video and look at this for a minute. And it is not box color. In fact, it is paddle color. All right, so now let's just run this and see if this thing crashes or do I get a rectangle? Do I get, in fact, an animated rectangle at the top of the screen? Okay, program didn't crash, that's good. But now I need to show it my hand. Now when I show it my hand, it's not gonna do anything on my hand, but now look at that. Boom, look at that. It is, I am moving a paddle with my finger. Okay, I am moving a paddle with my finger and I think that is pretty cool moving a paddle with my finger. Now what you're going to see is if I bring up another hand, it's going to put up another paddle, but we don't want to do that, right? Because we're not kind of developing a two paddle game. We're developing a one paddle game. Now what do I not like about this? I don't like that it is putting the pad. Well, first of all, it's doing exactly what we told it to. It is putting the paddle, the left edge of the paddle where my finger is. It would be a lot more intuitive if it put the center of the paddle where my finger is. So let's see if we can make that adjustment to make this work a little bit better. And in order to do that, what you want is the left corner to not be at the position of the index finger. You want it to be behind that by half the width. And so what I would need to do here is I would need to subtract off of this paddle, pad, pad, dull width divided by two. Now what problem do I have here with what I just did? What problem do I have here with what I just did? And I hate being a munchkin. So let's see if we can move that up like that. Okay, so what we did was we subtracted paddle width by two. That should put my finger not at the edge, but it should put it at the middle. Okay, because I'm subtracting the edge of the rectangle is going to be is going to be scooted over by half the width from my finger position. Now, what problem do we create there? Paddle width is an integer, but paddle width divided by two might not be an integer, and therefore we might be uh, passing this rectangle call a non-integer position, which might cause it to crash. So this whole hand thing, I better make an int. So I'm going to make that whole hand thing an int, like, and I don't need to make the zero an int, but just this calculation of hand position minus paddle width over two, make that whole thing there an int. Get your parentheses right, okay? I can't tell you what fraction of my life I spent in misery because of parentheses opening and closing problems in programs. I don't have to put the zero in an int because zero is always gonna be an int. Well, if this is shifted to the left by paddle width over two, where does the other side need to be? It needs to be shifted to the what? To the right by not paddle width, but to the right by paddle width over two. So the paddle is still paddle width, but half of paddle width is to the left of the finger and half of paddle width is to the right of the finger. Now the finger should be centered on the paddle. But again, we have to make this whole thing an int as well. So int of hand, okay, int of hand, 
and then ending with the divided by 2. And then still it's going to be down by paddle height. Okay, let's give this a try and see what happens. It's running. Okay. And uh, now let's bring this up. Boom. Look at that. Do you see what's happening now? I am precisely controlling this position. I am precisely controlling this position. And one of the things, guys, that you're kind of starting to see here is like you're thinking about your finger, but really what is your program? What is MediaPipe looking for? It's looking for a hand. And make sure it sees enough of your hand. Like if I come over here and I'm getting my, well, that actually worked better than what I thought. But make sure, like if I'm getting like this, it loses my index finger. So just make sure that you're giving it in the field of view something that it can track. Okay, I have a paddle. I'm moving the paddle back and forth based on a gesture, based on my hand landmark. Now you guys, especially you guys that kind of grew up in the old arcade days and the early arcade video games, what type of game are you thinking about here when you see this? Pong. Okay, it's kind of like Pong, but instead of having knobs, you're using the position based on your finger. Now, this is what your homework assignment is. Your homework assignment is to go away and develop a Pong game that is based on your finger position. Now, how does Pong work? You have a little ball, and the ball is going to bounce around on the screen, and then it comes up. If it hits the paddle, then it bounces back down. If it doesn't hit the paddle, then it just goes off the screen and then you've used one of your lives. Okay, so the object is, is to keep the game going, right? To keep bouncing the ball. But if the paddle does not intersect the ball, then the ball is lost and you lose a point. And then kind of what I'm thinking is every time that you bounce off of the paddle, you get a point. Now, you can go a lot of different directions with this. You might, I'm going to just say the assignment is to make a one player game, but you could, you know, you could come in and you could make it a two player game if you wanted to, maybe a left and right, a two player game. But actually, don't do that because it's hard right now to keep track of which hand is which that I haven't shown you what to do in order to know which hand is which. And so really make it, the assignment definitely is to make it a one player game. But what you might think about things that you might think about is keeping score. You might think about having the score displayed. You might think about having a certain finite number of lives. You might think about displaying that finite number of lives. You might decrement that finite number of lives as you lose your ball because you're not doing it. And then the other thing that you might think about is you might think about kind of kind of making the game get harder as it goes on. And you can think of different ways that you can make the game get harder as the game progresses so you don't get good and just sit there and play forever. It needs to, as the game goes on, get harder and harder and harder. So then you can't just sit and get bored with it. Okay, does that make sense? So that is going to be your homework for next week. And what I hope is, I hope you guys will work on this. I hope you will post your solutions. And then in the next lesson, what I will do is I will show you my solution and and I hope you guys will go kind of well beyond what I'm uh, where I'm going with this. But you can uh, hopefully all of a sudden lights are going off in your head, light bulbs are going off in your head about cool gesture based games that you could do, sort of like gesture based games of some of those old arcade games that we uh, older guys used to play. Okay, guys. I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am. We didn't learn a lot today, but I kind of showed you a new direction that we can go. And so what I need you to do is work on the homework. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up that uh, if uh, it, yeah, give me a thumbs up and then also leave a comment down below, because when you leave a comment, it feeds the old YouTube algorithms and it helps this video get distributed and uh, more people exposed to these lessons. And that's what we want. We want more people writing programs, learning engineering, and few people, fewer people just sitting around watching silly cat videos. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and also share this with other people. If you know people that you think might enjoy learning this, share this with your friends. Okay, guys, Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.